Okay, everyone. Hello. I'm Will Ryan, and uh, I'm back for more of Gamergate, because it never ends. And uh, in a way, that's a good thing, and in another way is, well, I guess, I, I wish some things would end. Uh, at the front of this thing, I'm guessing that um, more people will want to ask me questions uh, this time. Um, there were a few questions last time. I'm guessing there will be a lot more this time. I'm going to say this on the front end. I don't know what the deal is with this Google Air Hangouts. I cannot see the chat. I don't know if this is just me. I don't know if this is a problem. But I, I don't know what I don't know if this is normal. I don't know what the deal is, but I cannot see what people are saying in the chat. The chat is open. It, you know, it's open right next to this window where I'm looking at it, but I can't see anybody's messages. So I have no idea what's what's going on. But um Today, I'm going to, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about journalism. The unfortunate nature of this whole Gamergate thing is that on a repeated basis, on an unending basis, the journalists that we are trying to fight against continue to make it impossible to talk about gaming journalism without talking about Zoe Quinn. Frankly, God damn phone. Frankly, it's sickening to me. It's, it's, it's frustrating that we cannot talk about the issues that we're trying to fight against without bringing up Zoe Quinn. Because today... There, are, there were two news articles that ran. The first one is one I think a lot of people knew about. It's the Jennifer Hale interview done at Marketplace Tech. That's the first one I'm going to talk about. Now, we learned today that basically Jennifer Hale is kind of a, um, I guess you could call her an agnostic maybe. You could just, you could call her seeking she is basically trying to find out as much as she can about Gamergate and legitimately understand it. So she went, you know, some, I don't know if she'd ever done an interview about this before because some people were talking about um, an article on the UK Telegraph and I think they were talking about the Zoe Quinn article. I'll get to that next. But for now, um, before I, right before I get into this, I want to say if you guys have questions things you want to ask or ask me, questions you want me to answer, uh, other topics you would like me to address, please send them to my Twitter because I cannot see the chat. Send them to uh, at an America. That's my Twitter handle. If you have questions or requests for me, things to, for me to talk about, send them there and I'll address them as I can. Most of them will probably be addressed once I'm done talking about these issues, these articles, but I will get to them if I can. Okay, so this article, this Marketplace Tech article, Jennifer Hale, to me, was impressive here. Uh, she demonstrated, to me at the very least, that she is a very classy person. What you have here is you have an art, you have an, and I put the links in, I put the links to everything I'm going to talk about today in the description. So you guys can go down and click on the Marketplace Tech article if you want to follow along and see what I'm talking about. This is an article written by a reporter named Noel King. This article is a prototypical example of the bullshit awful, sensationalist, biased journalism that we are fighting against. Because, like I said, Jennifer Hale is impressive here. She doesn't buy into a narrative. She doesn't further a narrative. Either side. 
she doesn't try to she doesn't try to throw us under the bus. She doesn't try to be against us. What happens is the reporter tries to insert not only her own agenda but Zoe Quinn into this article. This for the for the for the record. This article should be about Gamergate. Instead, this Reporter is trying to make it about slandering Gamergate, slandering us by calling us misogynists, and making it about Zoe Quinn. Because again, it's apparently impossible to talk about Gamergate and journalism without talking about Zoe Quinn. I'd love it if some people could explain this to me. I, 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 I would love to talk about journalism and without talking about Zoe Quinn. And I'm going to. But I, I, I'm struggling to understand this. I, I... Can someone maybe explain to me why, legitimately, I don't mean like sarcastic, snarky responses, why, substantively, we have to keep talking about Zoe Quinn. This is the narrative. This is what we're fighting against. We're fighting against this corrupt, bullshit, sensationalist journalism that's all about clickbait and talking about what's popular. There's no actual integrity in fucking any of this. So let's, let's read this. Jennifer, the first question asked of Jennifer Hale is to help us is there seems to be in this response meaning the response to journalism there uh, you know this this um this uprising against Zoe Quinn because of the internet aristocrats videos about her journalistic misconduct there seems to be in this response some real misogyny possibly even dangerous misogyny in this community of people who play and write about video games what have you experienced? So again, let's let's just let's just point this out right away. Before we even get to Jennifer Hale, this reporter, Noel King, is generalizing the entire community of gamers. All of Gamergate. There's real dangerous misogyny here. Here's Jennifer Hale's response. I had several friends advise me against even coming in here and doing this interview because as a segment of the game community, it's small but it's vicious that is bullying. It's giving the gaming community a bad name. Now, it, you know, that's a comment that really could be taken either way. Now, from my perspective, I could see that she's talking about uh, hmm, uh, Lee Alexander, Zoe Quinn, who tried to trash an entire company, uh, Malka over at NeoGAF. I mean, all of the people on their side who continue to trash us. I mean, I'm just saying, like, and I'm sure if, excuse me, I'm sure if someone on their side read it, they'd think she was talking about us. So it's, it's, she's, what she's doing here is she's making a neutral statement. I think it's fair to assess that there are members, there is a small but angry but vicious group of bullies that align themselves with Gamergate, that are on 4chan. I think that's a fair assessment. That's a fair thing to say. If she's talking about us, it's hard to tell who she's actually talking about. She could be talking about all the, the gaming journalists and the people in and the people in, uh, the you know, on our side, the, the people talking about it who are vicious and awful. So I appreciate that that's the way she words it. The next question. Some of the threats that were made against Zoe Quinn. People threatened to kneecap her. People threatened to give her brain damage if they could find her in person. Does the gaming community deserve to have a bad name? Okay. You, reporter, 
are saying these things. You are bringing these into the article and trying to bad... And you are, you are bad-mouthing the gaming community right now. Sure, all these things have happened. But by bringing them up, by bringing them into this article, you are bad-mouthing the gaming community. You are doing everything you can by framing this discussion to badmouth the gaming community and give us all a bad name. And then you ask Jennifer Hale to affirm what you just said. But again, Jennifer Hale is classy enough that that's not what she does. Her response is, the community does not. These people within the community do. Again, the small but vicious minority of the gaming community, the bullies. That's who she's talking about here. We need to police ourselves. I don't know how to do that because the members of our community that have called out to these people to stop doing what they're doing are being then threatened themselves. Valid point. There's not much to be done about this small, angry group of people. So shut the hell up and ask another question. I feel like that's, that's, what, that's what she really wanted to say here. You're continuing to ask me questions about these people, and I don't know what I'm, what I'm supposed to say about it. I don't know what we're supposed to do about it. Can we talk about Gamergate? That's what, I, that's what I'm reading into this. That's what I'm seeing. That's how I'm interpreting her responses. Like, if I was in this position, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I thought we were going to talk about Gamergate. I thought we were going to talk about the issues here, not talk about how horrible they all are and how horrible the gaming community is. But no, that's what this, that's what this, that's the narrative. That's the message this, this reporter is intent on inserting and promoting. The next question, again, but again, before, this, this cannot be a discussion about Gamergate. It has to be about Zoe Quinn. It has to be almost exclusively about Zoe Quinn. Here's the question, the next question. At the same time that Zoe Quinn is facing this torrent of abuse, oh God, we got to bring up Anita Sarkeesian. A feminist media critic named Anita Sarkeesian releases a video criticizing the way that women are treated or portrayed in video games. She calls them background decoration, victims, prostitutes, and she gets pilloried for what she said. You've worked in the video game industry. You've done the voices for some popular characters. Does Anita Sarkeesian have a point? So again, this isn't about Gamergate. This is about proving that the gaming community is misogynistic and terrible. That's all this is about. This reporter was looking to get attention for herself by capitalizing on a bullshit manufactured conspiracy by furthering it. Because that's all she's doing here. Read the questions yourselves. Tell me she's doing something different. Tell me she's not exclusively trying to promote and further this narrative that the entire gaming community is misogynist and terrible. Because Jennifer Hale has had to correct her twice and disagree with her twice now. So she now asks again. So the first time she asked if... The first time she asked, she said, what have you experienced? She basically wanted to, what she wanted to hear from that first question was Jennifer Hale affirming that, yes, there's sexism and misogyny everywhere. She didn't get that because Jennifer Hale said it was a small sector, a splinter portion of the gaming community. She then tried to push it further by talking about threats to Zoe Quinn and then and, and tried to try to you know lean on Jennifer Hale more and get her to affirm that the gaming community deserves to have a bad name these questions just get more absurdly loaded as time goes on and now she is literally stating Anita Sarkeesian's assessment of the gaming community as as sexist, misogynist, and horrible, and she is literally, point blank, asking Jennifer Hale to affirm that. Does Anita, Sar does Anita Sarkeesian have a point? 
She is she is officially at this point in time not talking about Gamergate. We're not having a discussion here. We're not talking about a damn thing. Noel King is trying to strong arm Jennifer Hale into saying that we're all horrible misogynist scumbags. That's what's occurring in this interview right now. But again, Jennifer Hale is above all this. Her response is, I myself would love to see more equal representation of women in games, more empowered roles. Let's remove gender from casting everywhere we can and play around with it. Let's do the same with race. Let's go on and create the next level. We can't do that right now. I'm nervous about what this piece of the community is going to do to me for speaking up about anything, and that's not okay. We can't do anything until we deal with that. Okay, so this is an important clarification. For speaking about anything, right now, Jennifer Hale is terrified to take a side. She doesn't know which side is right. She's looking into this right now as much as possible. But she it's clear from this woman's absurd obsession with proving that the gaming community is misogynist that she Jennifer Hale is going to have to take a side because she's going to have to decide for herself uh, what she, I guess she doesn't have to take a side. That's unreasonably, um, that's an unreasonable expectation. But she's going to have to figure out what she believes because Otherwise, she's going to have continuous confrontations like this where people are literally telling her what to believe, demanding that she agree with them. So when she says, I, I'm nervous about what this piece of the community is going to do, me, do to me for speaking up about anything, she's not just talking about the angry 4chaners. She's not talking about the actual awful people who have decided to, you know, capitalize on Gamergate. She's talking about... The gaming journalist, too. She's talking about Zoe Quinn, who has tried to destroy companies for disagreeing with her. She's talking about Lee Alexander, who has threatened to ruin people's careers for disagreeing with her, for not liking what she says. She's talking about them, too. She's talking about Malka. She's talking about all these people who want to silence anybody who disagrees with them and run them out of the room, who call women self-hating bitches because they don't side with their insane narrative. So the final question. Given the attention this back and forth has received, because at this point I think even this even Noel realized, okay, she's not going to basically tell me I'm right. Shit, what do I do now? So her final question is, given the attention this back and forth received, do you think we've reached a kind of tipping point moment where this conversation is bound to happen? She actually responds to something that Jennifer Hale said. I am quite shocked, <laughs> frankly. I, I can't believe that this is an actual question being asked in response to something that Jennifer Hale said and not just another, another like forcible attempt to make her call the gaming, gaming community sexist. I guess third time wasn't the charm. Let's, do, let's move on to something else. Jennifer Hale's response, which is something I think we should all appreciate. Her response is, I hope so, because games are an incredible art form. I've used a couple of games to learn another language or recover from breaking my foot, things that would have stymied me. I think it is time for this part of the industry to fully step into the idea that we're not fringe anymore. We can, without losing the awesome kid part of ourselves, grow up and become leaders in a really cool way. And this is hopefully creating a crisis that will help us do that. Thank you. That's exactly what the goal of this is. That right there is the stated mission of Gamergate. That is what we want. We want more women in the industry. We want quality video games in the industry. I don't care if it's a woman that makes a quality video game. I don't care if it's some dude in India or Iraq or France and it's the first game he's ever made and it's or he or she or if it's a gay woman or a gay man. If they make a good game, they make a good game and I'm going to appreciate it. And I'm going to enjoy it.
What I'm not going to appreciate is people constantly telling me, constantly telling me that I'm bad for wanting that. What I'm not going to tolerate is Zoe Quinn constantly being trotted out as some kind of symbol, some kind of champion of women in the video game industry, while, as I demonstrated last time, she tried to destroy a company that was trying to get, that was who's ex, the fine young capitalists, whose explicit stated goal is to get more women into the industry. This is not, again, that's why this narrative is so insulting and sickening to me. They are sheltering a, 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 an internet terrorist of sorts. She tried to destroy a company. And then she tries to, she tries to manipulate that and steal their mission and then run them out of business so nobody will realize it. And now she's supposedly standing up for the same things they were the same things that she tried to prevent them from doing. It's disgusting. But speaking of disgusting, this, this the second article that was published today. And if you're tuning in for the rage portion of my comments, here we go. This is this is what I was talking about. Zoe Quinn wants everybody to leave her alone. She's the victim. Why can't we leave her alone? Why can't we go away? Why can't we stop trashing her and forcing her into this discussion? Why are we so mean? Why are we so vile? And yet, she continues to bring attention to herself and spread this false narrative. She goes to the New Yorker. She goes to the UK Telegraph and gets these things printed. She goes everywhere she can to keep herself in the limelight, to make this all about her. And the journalists who see this as the controversy are fully ready and willing to do it for her. I mean, the last article was bad because it's just clearly sensationalist garbage that Jennifer Hale averted, refused to be a party to. This is Zoe Quinn going out and finding somebody to actively help her accomplish this. And you can tell right from the headline what this is going to be. Misogyny, death threats, and a mob of trolls. Inside the dark world of video games with Zoe Quinn, target of Gamergate. Wow, that sounds like just an objective, wonderful piece of journalism, doesn't it? Sounds like we'll be fairly represented. It reminds me of when Chloe Rad, I think that was her name, decided that when the fine young capitalists were talking about their problems with Zoe Quinn, she would go to Zoe Quinn and decide, find out if Zoe Quinn was okay with her talking about it. I'm sure this will be just as fair. So, first of all, Zoe Quinn, 27, was recently the victim of a spiteful attack by an ex-boyfriend. I guess you fail to mention the fact that this ex, that she cheated on this ex-boyfriend with her boss to get favors to advance in the gaming industry. It's it's convenient that you left that out. It's it's convenient that your goal here is to paint the ex-boyfriend as the bad guy, the person that Zoe Quinn cheated on. Man, she's such a victim here. He published a blog post naming a list of men that she has allegedly slept with, a number of whom are video games journalists. Quinn, I should point out, is a video games developer. Oh, well, it's a good thing you managed to remember that one. This one act led to Quinn receiving death and rape threats, having to, having to move out of her house and becoming a victim of revenge porn from another ex but it has also triggered a major backlash online called Gamergate. A quick glance at Twitter shows a number of misogynistic, sexist, and pretty shocking comments coming under this hashtag. Okay. Fucker. Radhika Sangani. Because I don't, and I don't give a shit if that's the right pronunciation of your name. Let's right now 
take a real quick look at the misogynistic vitriol by going to twitter.com and clicking on the hashtag Gamergate to see the results. Well, nothing of note so far. Rick the Kid. Funny how Lee Alexander uses uses nerd as if it was a derogatory term. Crazy how you thought you left these bullies back in high school. Joe Rogan asking for somebody to send him a good link about Gamergate. Uh, you know, I've already spent a minute on this. I don't see any misogyny. I don't see any sexism. Ben Spur. A, a advocate of Gamergate. Not only are Gamergate and, and Not Your Shield bringing justice to a lot of awful people, but they're also introducing us to a lot of good ones. Oh, look. Oh, you know what? I did manage to find some death threats and misogyny. From Rayeko, M-R-A, R-A-R, I'm sorry, R-E-Y-E-K-O-M-R-A. Anti-Gamergate person tells someone to commit suicide for disagreeing with them on Suicide Awareness Day. For the record, I didn't plan this. I just clicked on the Gamergate tag right now, and this is there. From Colin Smith. How Zoe, screen, how is, how Zoe Quinn's screenshots of Fortran's dirty tricks were just the appetizer. Hats off to David Futrell for this post. The Backlog Gamer, in response... I'd like to direct your attention to this. It's a detailed count, account of how Gamergate came to be. It shows more than just cherry-picked comments by an aggressive minority. Sure, those people exist, and this is across like numerous, numerous uh, tweets as I'm seeing now. But aggressive, but it shows sort of those people exist. But that aggressive minority exists on both sides of the conversation here, and is not exclusive to one side. These are people who say terrible things, but they don't just belong to hashtag Gamergate, and they are a minority within that group. I think it's unfair to try and claim that Gamergate or even 4chan are responsible for Zoe's harassment. When the truth is that it's aggressive sociopaths who happen to frequent 4chan, 4chan itself has rules against those actions. That's why, if anyone does try to say these stupid things, it's in an unmoderated, unaffiliated chat room. If Zoe wants to curb the harassment down, she should stop blaming an entire group of people and target the perpetrators. Because all, the, all that does is expose her to more groups of sociopaths who will want to target her. Colin Smith, let me get this straight. You in particular have sent me dozens of tweets to show how reasonable you are and how just your cause is. The Backlog Gamer. Considering this is a complex situation, 140 characters isn't really enough to talk about it rationally. No. Colin Smith. You sad little man. Hunting out, stra hunting out strangers to argue your peace with folks who want nothing to do with you. Go hang. Blocked. The Backlog Gamer. Go hang. Am I wrong to believe he just told me to kill myself? In real time, I'm retweeting this right now. It's just been retweeted on my Twitter feed at, at an America. Just posted it. Go read it. If you think if you think I'm making this up, if you think I just made shit up, go read it. I just retweeted it in real time. An anti-Gamergate person telling someone to commit suicide for agree disagreeing with them on Suicide Awareness Day, no less. On Suicide Awareness Day. Yes, the death threats are fucking real, Radika. I just took a quick look at Gamergate. Look where I found them. You can't, you can't script this. You can't make this up. This just happened in real time. I did exactly what you asked. And what happened? In a snapshot, one time I did what you asked. And it completely proved you, proved you wrong. 
I found no misogynistic comments, no sexist comments, and the only pretty shocking comment I found coming under this hashtag was a pro Zoe Quinn member telling a good-natured, calm, and, and innocent person to hang himself. Are you kidding me? For trying to articulately and kindly articulate our side of the opinion, this guy should go hang himself. Yes, we are the scary, awful trash. Meanwhile, an adult man who clears to be a businessman tells... Uh, tells a kid to go hang himself on Suicide Awareness Day because he was civil about it. Because he was civil about disagreeing. Are you out of your damn mind? You fucking lunatic. How dare you? I'm going to caution people to not harass this guy, despite how much I fucking hate him right now, I'm going to caution people to not harass this guy because this will only cause a problem for us. You know, there's nothing to be gained from lashing out and trying to get revenge on this guy. I'm sorry. We can't do it. I won't do it. I won't be suckered into it. I'm not going to play the damn game. Okay? I need to calm down for a minute. I I was not plan I did not know this existed. I was not planning on discussing this. I can't believe this is a thing. Sorry, I, I cannot I'm speechless. Guess back to fucking Zoe Quinn. This is about to make this whole thing so much worse. So much worse. But don't harass this guy. This whatever the fuck his name was. Uh, the hell. Um, it opened it, and I don't know where it opened it. Give me a second. There it is. Don't harass this Colin Smith guy. It will get you nowhere. But. I'm just. I'm sorry, I need to look this guy up. This is, this is, this is too much. Has written for Q, The Bluffer's Guide, NewStatesman.com, Sequart, Sequential Comic Book Resources, Forbidden Planet International. This man is an adult. All right, back to Zoe Quinn. Got to get back on track here. Okay. I can't be go home because they have been posting it around my home address, often with threats attached to it. My dad gets phone calls screaming his daughter's a whore. They harass him and he's recovering from a heart attack. I fear for him. Number one, that's a fucking lie. She was never doxxed. That's a lie. It's a lie. It was a lie at the beginning of August. It's still a lie now. You have never been doxxed. You manufacture this controversy. You made it up to get attention to yourself, just like you're still doing all of this to get attention to yourself. I'm just receiving information from JT that Devin Farasi, D-E-V-I-N-F-A-R-A-C-I, is currently posting to Wizard Chen to harass them. As we're talking about, in real time, right now, as I'm talking about Zoe Quinn making up her bullshit Wizard Chan harassment thing, Devin Farasi, her close friend, is now currently harassing Wizard Chan again for this bullshit that never happened. Unbelievable. 
unbefucking leaveable. They've been posting my home address. It never happened. Liar. I'm not saying she hasn't been harassed. I'm not saying she hasn't received death threats. I'm not saying people haven't said awful things to her. But she has never been doxxed. It never happened. It still has never happened. She doxxed the owner of... She do, helped dox the owner of the fine young capitalists and tried to ruin his company. She helped her friend dox a 16-year-old transgender teenager. You want to talk about death threats that, are, that people are going to receive. You've probably caused more than you've ever received. Don't preach, don't talk to us about how you're the victim. When every time you do anything that brings attention to you on Twitter, you damage people. And now we transition to something completely different. But trolling women is not what gamers claim that Gamergate is all about. They feel that Quinn's alleged sex life proves a questionable relationship between journalists and developers. To them, this is an issue about journalistic integrity and ethics. Hashtag Gamergate is the hashtag they, they say they're using to have a worthwhile conversation. Notice, I'm just going to scroll down and make sure I'm right about this. Yes, she never positively or even neutrally represents anybody from Gamergate. She interviews a guy, and we're going to get there. But basically, from the very beginning, she does nothing but trash us. There's nothing but talk about how we're awful people. And at the end, well, we'll get there. Sorry, I don't want to spoil this. I want to go through this whole damn thing. Quinn disagrees. They're attempting to hide their hatred of women behind a smoke screen. It's so thinly veiled. They claim to care about ethics and journalistic integrity. But the only people they have been going after are women. Hmm. Isn't Jared Malka a guy? Hmm. Isn't the head editor of Rock, Paper, Shotgun bother? Isn't he a guy? Do you have any concept, any inkling whatsoever Any inkling whatsoever of what has been happening in reality. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. They don't speak about major game developers whining and dining journalists. Let me read that sentence again. They don't speak about major gaming developers whining and dining journalists. Just going to let that one slide because there's way more here. No, as retarded as that is. All it is is who might have kissed who, specifically what woman might have kissed someone. That's all we talk about. That one thing we haven't talked about in a month. That's, that's all we talk about. Okay. Even more, I mean, I mean the, the, even back when this was literally Adam Baldwin posting... <laughs> Posting the Internet Aristocrats videos. That's not, that was never all it is. This is a lie. This is nonstop lies. This is a manufactured false narrative. And it just goes on like this for the whole time. She decided, she, she, you know, she, they interview uh, Jer, Javer Rice, Javer Rice, who admits that he's angry at Zoe. And he says, I'm not in any way, shape, or form trolling. I'm searching for answers and going straight to the source. I'm openly demonstrating my dislike of her as a public figure. This is not a matter of gender or sexuality or even her own personal life. All that's meaningless to me. This is a matter of just corruption and hypocrisy, nothing more, nothing less. Fair statement. That's what we're about. It's accurate. But despite that, she goes back to Quinn, who continues to deride us and declare, this is all about anger and rage. That's a lie. 
It's all about misogyny. And then we get to the real thing, the not your shield hashtag, which Quinn asserts is that it was born Okay, I'm sorry. This is the one comment I forgot. Her advice is, stop using a hashtag that originates in hatred and a misogynistic campaign against a couple of developers and journalists who are women. Fuck's sake. Okay, I wanted to tell you guys what I did today. I went on Google, and I typed in Adam Baldwin Gamergate because the most prevalently rebutted assertion is that Gamergate originated on 4chan. I went to Google and I typed in Adam Baldwin Gamergate. The eighth result on the page is the Gamergate page on Know Your Meme. If you go to Know Your Meme and scroll down to their uh, citations, the first citation on the page is a link to Adam Baldwin's original Gamergate tweet. I encourage anybody that agrees with this insane, manufactured, bullshit narrative to come to me, go to my Twitter feed, send me a link, a picture, any evidence of Gamergate existing prior to Adam Baldwin's tweet. Do it. I dare you. Do it. Prove me wrong. Prove everyone wrong. Prove all the evidence wrong. Do it. And Zoe Quinn, don't you dare assign, don't you dare tell us what our hashtags mean and then tell us to stop using them. You do not get to dictate to us what we're about and then tell us we shouldn't be about that. We get to define what Gamergate is. It's ours. We get to define what Not Your Shield is. It is ours. You don't get to stand against it, lie about us every time you, every opportunity you get, libel us, slander us, tell us what we stand for, tell us we're awful people, and then tell us that's what we shouldn't be. Tell us we should let you and your game ethics bullshit co-opt us. It's not going to happen. Period. And I want to point out that even, even though, because I'm, I'm transitioning away from this, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done with Zoe Quinn. Despite the fact that Radhika Sangani interviewed a guy, from, a guy from 4chan, interviewed a guy from Gamergate, I don't know if he was from 4chan, to try and actually get some opinion. Interview a guy named Sam Ovet who said, I'm a strong supporter of Gamergate as I feel certain journalistic sites are insulting me purely for liking video games and painting an entire group of people as white, bigoted misogynists with regards to people accusing us of trolling women online. The aim of Gamergate has nothing to do with women in video games. That's not to say there aren't people trolling. I'm sure there are. And it's not acceptable as Gamergate supports women. And it's sad to see there are indeed some people that misogynist, that are misogynistic that claim to follow Gamergate. The cruel messages to Zoe Quinn and other female journalists are, of course, horrible, unacceptable, and not okay. Yet despite that statement that she quotes in this article, despite that being the message of Gamergate, that, she, that, that, that Radhika Sangani represents in this article, her closing word is, let's just hope that Gamergate will come to a quick and well-deserved end. Yes, because a small portion of the community does these things, and we can't control them. Gamergate deserves to come to a quick end. I mean, these things are unbelievable. This is what passes for journalism. This is, this is why I brought these up. This is in marketplace tech, which is kind of a big deal in terms of, like, the technology industry. This is in the UK Telegraph, which is a big deal in Europe. In, or, I'm sorry, in, in the United Kingdom. It's a big newspaper over there. Meanwhile, now I said, I said when I advertised it that I was going to prove that we were winning the journalism 
We are winning in journalism, and we are. And here it is. Two, art, two more articles released today because I'm sick of being negative. Two more articles released today from Cine, Cinema Blend and The Escapist. The first one is from Cinema Blend. The headline, Not Your Shield video shows all the different faces behind Gamergate. Let me read that again, guys. Not Your Shield video shows all the different faces behind Gamergate. I'm sorry, wait. There's a three-minute video on the internet, on YouTube no less, that proves that it's not a bunch of white guys? It's <laughs> stunning that Radhika Sangani couldn't manage to find it. Stunning that she didn't bother going to Google and searching for Not Your Shield. Stunning that she misrepresents and lies about searching for Gamergate in her own article. Because that's the only way she came to the conclusion that it's littered with misogyny. And yet she couldn't find this video about the origin of Not Your Shield. No, she's going to take Zoe Quinn's word. Fuck's sake. Anyway, the article. Mainstream media may be pointing a very biased view on Gamergate and the people involved in it. But gamers from all over the world have come together in a mixing pot of inclusion, acceptance, and a fight against the corruption currently plaguing games media. They did so with a video called We Are Gamers. Throughout this whole fiasco, there have been countless non-white males and females supporting the, that Gamergate movement to help increase transparency and aim to elevate the ethics put into play by video game journalists. However, anyone who usually reads major news sites on G News will see nothing but articles stating that Gamergate was created to has harass and abuse women. Unfortunately, none of the major sites have been willing to report the facts or stick to the truth. Some sites have even been reporting that Gamergate was started by 4chan as a way to harass women. The reality is that the hashtag, hashtag Gamergate, was coined by actor Adam Baldwin on August 27th after watching the Internet Aristocrat videos. His original tweet is embedded below. It's amazing how the larger media outlets are trying to spin the narrative and change history. Interestingly enough, the Escapist Magazine's co-founder, Alexander Macris, personally asked the members of 4chan what the goal of Gamergate was, and head writer Greg Tito, who by the way is their head editor, kind of important, print an interview on The Escapist. Here's what was said about Gamergate by a member of 4chan. Quote, now this is 4chan. This is supposedly where all of the hatred, where all of the dox threats, everything awful and horrendous done to every single, to all women in the gaming industry comes from. This is the source of nothing good, everything terrible. The endless, the endless resource of misogyny and sexism and hate. Here's what was said about Gamergate by a member of 4chan. Quote, The purpose of Gamergate is to rally for transparency in gaming journalism and the media in general, and also to put an end to the blatant corruption in the gaming industry and gaming journalism. The thing that most people seem to forget is that video games are games. They exist for one sole reason, entertainment. As soon as people start to stray away from that concept, it starts to become detrimental to the medium. Shoehorning politics into something that is meant as entertainment is entirely unnecessary and moreover destruction to video games as a whole. It quickly becomes about politics and only politics and the main purpose, entertainment, begins to fade out and become irrelevant. Wow. It's a pretty good point he makes there. Now I'm sure, I'm sure if I gave ample time, someone could somehow spin away to imply that he's he's saying that women are irrelevant because all of this, all the politics are about women. So therefore, he's actually being misogynistic and sexist because he's saying that you you, you really want to force women out because it's women that care about these things. And so, blah, 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 blah. give it time. I'm sure there'll be some insane, horrific, lunatic spin on this. 
But for now, this is fucking awesome. Additionally, it's being misreported that Not Your Shield, a hashtag that's being used alongside Gamergate, was created by 4chan to, quote, weaponize minorities. And if you click on the weaponize minorities, it goes to Matt Lee's. Hmm, you know, that name sounds so fucking familiar. Oh, yeah, Matt Lee's. Hmm. Unbelievable. So, again, back to the article, because I guess it's just fucking ridiculous. The hashtag, as noted by the one young fellow who started it in the video up above. That's right, we have a video from the person who started it. People actually fought, trying to find out the truth behind these things and what actually happened. Instead of quoting the people who are most violently, vitriolically criticizing them as the most reliable sources. It's so hard to do actual fucking journalism. It's too difficult to say to look at something and say, wow, these people are being accused of being pretty awful people. Maybe we should go and find out if they're pretty awful people. No, it's time to take their, their horrendous, bullying, harassing criticizer, critics at their word. The people who threaten to end, end people's careers if they disagree with them, like Lee Alexander. We should take them at their word. I don't know why this is so fucking hard. Because it's a clearly not. The hashtag, as noted by the one young fellow who started in the video up above, has, was used to help give women, blacks, Asians, Hispanics, Indians, Arabs, bisexuals, transgender, gay, lesbian, and every other non-white male a voice. Gamers simply want to be heard. It is very sad to see how media has run rampant with demonizing the gaming community in this way. Smaller sites like Games Nosh, Gamer Headlines, Tech Raptor, and Niche Gamer, to name a few, have been striving to provide accurate and factual coverage of everything that has transpired over the past couple of weeks. <laughs> Fucking thank you. This is what I mean when I say that we're winning. Yeah, Cinema Blend is a smaller site. Yeah, this is their gaming section. Doesn't matter. This is us winning. How long did it take for the fine young capitalists to be able to tell their story? It's taken a lot less time for the Not Your Shield story to be told. The fine young capitalist thing started in February and it wasn't finally told in that interview until earlier this week. This gamer, Gamergate started less than a month ago and now in less than a month the truth is being told. It's spreading. There's going to be a breaking point where people won't be able to ignore it anymore where enough people will find out the truth and the truth will have to be what's reported and we're get and we're moving there case in point last week the escapist posted a an article their head editor posted a, an article apologizing for everything that had happened everything they had written And um, the accusations of collusion and corruption in in uh, in, the, uh, in on their site, and I think that everybody's reaction, including my own, was oh, and and they posted it. I'm sorry, they posted a new bill of ethics, basically, a new charter for professional conduct and ethics on their site. And I think uh, me, along with everybody else, had kind of the same reaction of, yeah, we'll see where that goes. I was a little hopeful, but I was also kind of ambivalent about it. 
I mean, we've seen worse examples of it, like Rock, Paper, Shotgun, where they're like, gaming's for everybody. We should all come together, put down our, put down our weapons, and just be friends, except that all of you are terrible who disagree with us. And we don't have to represent you. Okay, that seems legit. As of September 6th, four days ago, the escapist, Greg Tito... Their head editor, because holy shit, no one else can do a damn thing right. Committed a flagrant act of journalism. He posted an article, exclusive. 4chan and Quinn respond to Gamergate chat logs. This is also in the um, in the description of the video. The Escapist spoke to 4chan and the independent game developer called Zoe Quinn. Fuck's sake. I'm not going to go through this whole thing because I don't want to go back to Zoe Quinn. But basically, I mean, you guys should read this. Because this is what we're fighting for. This is actual objective journalism. Greg Tito went out and interviewed 4chan users. He interviewed Zoe Quinn. He posted their comments. He compared the back he, he co compared and contrasted the back and forth about IRC logs and the evidence and the and the things people are claiming behind Gamergate and not your shield. He didn't take one side or the other. He reported both sides and left it at that. He left up a couple snapshots, one coming uh, of um of various segments of the IRC logs. He did fucking journalism. Real fucking journalism. Apparently, it's not that difficult. Because a blog editor at The Escapist and a blogger at Cinema Blend are capable of it. But I'm sorry, it's too difficult because a reporter at the UK Telegraph and another reporter at Marketplace Tech are incapable of it. It's almost like if you reach, pa if you get past a certain glass ceiling in the journalism industry, you lose your journalistic integrity. It's like the cost of getting through that ceiling is abandoning all morality and internal integrity. At least in gaming journalism, that's the way it seems. Because how many, how many articles have we seen just over the last week capitalizing off of Zoe Quinn and everything about her and trashing us in one-sided spot fests? But again, this is hilarious. Because... <clears throat> There's an image about uh, that I linked to in the comments, that I linked to in the description, about the truth behind 4chan. This is a quote uh, from a blogger, because I've seen this, and there have been pictures pa uh, parodying this, that 4chan is a cathedral of misogyny, rejecting females and providing a safe space for anti-women activities. These are all sourced from Alexa, which is a site that measures demographics of traffic that visit each site. Who visits 4chan.org? The, and there's a, there's a, they have a thing, they have a scale that's internet average. In other words, it's compared to like, it, there's like a baseline of these are, this is the average number of men who visits a website, visit websites in general, and this is the average amount of women that visit websites in general. Who visits 4chan.org? Male, well below the internet average. Female, almost double the internet average. And then you go down and you look at Kotaku, Gama Sutra, Polygon, Giant Bomb, NeoGAF, and Ars Technica and specifically Polygon, the male demographic is double the internet average. The traffic to these sites that are claiming to be bastions 
bastions of feminism and defect and, de and defending minorities are nothing more than a bunch of guys patting themselves on the back. Now, Giant Bomb is Giant Bomb is closer. Giant Bomb is roughly, you know, evenly as far as averages go, you know, barely over the average with male and barely under the average with female visitors. But NeoGAF, Ars Technica, Polygon, and Kotaku are way above and for males and way below for women. These are nothing but a bunch of men patting themselves on the back, saying, hey, we're so great to women. But, be, but, but, it's women like Lee Alexander who trot themselves out and sport egos so big, I can't believe their heads keep, I can't believe their bodies keep their heads tethered to the ground. Unbelievable. It's unreal. But again, we're winning. We're winning. Because how many of these articles about the truth behind Gamergate have we seen prior to this week? How many? Think about it. How many? This week we had we finally, after seven after six after six months, we finally have the full story behind the um behind we behind Zoe Zoe trashing the fine young capitals. We finally have their full story. We finally have a sympathetic have a have a have a story spreading truth coming out of Cin Cinema Blend and we finally have triggered actual journalistic integrity at the escapist. This is all this week, guys. The escapist who we once wrote off as a source of equal, equal measure, bigotry, and ignorance in the same category as Kotaku and Rock, Paper, Shotgun, and all of them. They have become objective journalists. At least their head editor is Greg Tito. And you know what, if, it, if this ever comes out, if this ever turns, if it turns out that some people working there aren't this way, fine. I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be bad apples in every bunch. But this to me speaks stronger than anything. We have a website that used to be awful, that we boycotted and turned against, and they hurt us, and they did something about it, and they cleaned up their act, at least so far. We did that. We pushed them to do that by standing up and saying, we're not going to take your shit. We made them do it. And they did it. You can't, you can't tell me that they bowed to pressures of sexism and misogyny. You can't tell me that sending countless death threats to their editors actually made that happen. That wouldn't do it. If that was what was happening, they wouldn't give a shit. It was a bunch of lunatic trolls from 4chan and elsewhere just threatening to kill them because of all the articles they were printing. There wouldn't have been a... Who was going to actually look at that and be like, hey, you know, they have a good point. We should probably kill ourselves. You know? Who, who, who would do that? No one. It's because we raised an ideological challenge to this. We said, hey, you fucked up. You're treating us like garbage, and we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to contact all of your advertisers and tell them that we're not going to take your shit anymore. Then we're going to go into our fucking internet settings, and we're going to block your website so that we can't go to it because we're sick of your bullshit. We're going to boycott you in every way possible because we're not going to take your shit anymore. And look at that, it worked. 
rock, paper, shotgun can go, can, you know, can, they can continue to be like, look, we're biased motherfuckers and we're going to be biased motherfuckers and we don't have to pretend we're not biased motherfuckers. And their head editor can say that journalism is whatever he wants to call it. And he can threaten people and, tr- and, and trash them and tell them to fuck off for disagreeing with, that, with him. That's that. If that's the business example he wants to set, if that's the business example they want to set, then guess what? You're not going to win us over. Just like the angry minority is not going to win you over by sending you death threats. You're not going to treat us in kind and convince us, hey, you know, maybe that is a good point. Maybe we should go fuck ourselves. We are winning, and I'm just and we and and it bears itself out. It's being proven time and time again that we are winning. Tyler fucking Malka. I'm gonna. This is this is while we're talking about. The hatred that gaming journalists have for us. The absolute hatred that they have for us. The disrespect, the bile, because we disagree with them. It's totally okay, by the way, for them to be biased and disagree with us. But if we disagree with them at all, then we need to fuck off and die. We should go hang ourselves, and fittingly on National Suicide Day. I'm sorry, Suicide Awareness Day. Holy shit, that sounded terrible. Anyway, Tyler Malka. The following, I I think I I, I linked this also in the description. So pull it up if you want. This occurred on the NeoGAF forum. At the start of this, NeoGAF's member etiquette and thread rules. Posting etiquette. Be polite. In general, when posting in threads, don't be a dick. Be respectful of other of other fellow members and learn to argue against the points in a discussion without making it personal or insulting the other party. Present your points well and others will respect your opinion more. Using proper grammar and avoiding typos will also make it easier for others to, to understand your message. Tyler Malka posts, Sexual objectification is great. Harassment is not. Tanumi responds, T-E-N-U-M-I, I hope I can find this guy on Twitter. I'd love to I'd love to talk to this guy. He sounds like a wonderful human being. So what you believe then is that it's perfectly fine to mentally treat someone as a piece of meat for you to ogle and fantasize about just as long as you don't act upon it. One wonders why society has so many issues. That sickens me that that the man that owns and represents this site believes that. And yes, I've fully read through the thread. Tanumi then posts another post from someone whose name is yes, no, 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 or yes, no, 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 yes. The guy says, but I have questionable fantasies, like hyper-violent fantasies that I indulge in, and I never act on them. Well, except sometimes I draw them for myself, but they're not harming others and no actual crimes happen. I think thought policing is a dangerous thing. Tanumi responds, the problem is that objectification has become such a large issue in our culture. It It has ingrained itself into most people's thought processes. Humans are sexual beings like pretty much every other being out there. We live to survive and reproduce. However, it feels at, it feels like, at least to me, like we've fallen back into the mind of animals, that a female is solely useful for reproduction. reproduction. Hence, treatment as just an object for one's pleasure. Tyler Malka responds by quoting that post, the one I just read, that ends with, hence, treatment as, as just an object for one's pleasure. Quotes that and says, <laughs> laughs at it, laughs at that comment. Tanumi responds by, but responds that by saying, "Mind speaking like an, mind speaking like an adult." Tanumi's consequence for asking Tyler Molka to abide by his own adequate rules that he set in place is a lifetime ban. Why was he banned? Tyler Malka's, Tyler Malka's own words, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure there are lots of brony websites to clop on. 
that you're actually attempting to discuss social concerns relating to human sexuality is beyond hilarious. So Tyler Malka, his reason for banning Tanumi is that he's a brony and having opinions on human sexuality is laughable. So basically, he's insulting Tanumi. Let me go back and read the posting etiquette that Tyler Malka created for his, his website forum. In general, when posting in threads, don't be a dick. Be respectful of other fellow members and learn to argue against the points in a discussion without making it personal, insulting the other party. Without making it personal or insulting the other party. Without making it personal or insulting the other party. Tyler, I think we should, you know, I think we should uh, organize a movement to purchase and send Tyler Malka as many dictionaries as possible. Because here's what Tyler's response. See, that's the ban. Tyler Malka's response to Tanumi, his response to Tanumi asking him to speak like an adult, after he banned Tanumi so Tanumi couldn't respond. Can we rename Internet Feminism to something like Basement Virgin, First Semester, Women's Issues Major, Sex-Fearing public, pub, sex fearing Bubble Person Prudism? That has more of a ring to it. For the record, Tyler Malka is also the guy who was criticizing us at Gamergate for being horrible misogynist sexists. And then shut that. Tried to shut the woman up by, when by um, who who, who uh, challenged him based on the idea of not your shield. Told her she had a huge vagina. The guy that wants to be a bastion of defending women. His exact tweet was. Gamergate can't be about desiring reforms in journalism and resenting women. The fundamental motivation... Well, apparently you can be in favor of both things, and you can try to destroy, harass, and, ins and you can insult people, even though it violates the rules you set forth. You can set a double standard for yourself and, not, and enforce it abusively, like a bludgeon. But we, we, you know, you, but you can then accuse us of doing the same thing, and that's totally okay. It's totally okay, you scumbag. But all right, um, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. So if you guys would like to jump on Twitter now and um, ask me anything... Ask me a. Uh, any questions you guys want, or send me anything you want. Um, getting a couple tweets from. I got one from Zenith, the one. Of Tyler Malka threatening somebody because Rashid said that backlash is coming. Actually, follow Rashid, uh, re rival. He said, he said, your names are numbered, backlash is coming, and Tyler Malka said, choose your words carefully. I don't think Tyler Malka responded again after that. I'm looking down the page, and I don't see anything more from Tyler Malka. I don't think he actually said anything beyond that. It doesn't look like that threatening to me. Oh, okay, here's a question. From nope.avidus. Nope. Oh, no, no, sorry, that's not it. Um, from Peed Teal, Pied Teal, Energy Beam Turbo. Uh... He, he's, he asked me, he's asked me if I think it's possible for the community, for us uh, in Gamergate, to start writing articles and get them published. Um, published where? I mean, if you actually, it's entirely possible. You want to know how it's possible? Go to Inkle Studios, the company that posted, that the company that um, Lee Alexander got noticed through. You want to get noticed? Go over to you want you want you want to do this? You guys want to do this? And you want to write your own pieces and share them on Twitter and spread them and flood the flood the uh, 
the message pool with facts and the truth, go to, I, I had a conversation with John the Gold, who is a co-founder of the co-founder of Inkle Studios. And he said that, there, that anyone can join and post on there and that they have over 500,000 users. If you guys want a way to have your voice be heard, if you want to write articles supporting Gamergate and you want to get them out there, go to Inkle Studios. Sign up for an account and start writing your articles. But just know that if you do, you can't get away with doing the shit that I'm doing here. I'm doing this for the purpose of entertainment and commentary. If you want to write articles representing Gamergate, make sure it's journalistic. Make sure it's backed up by facts. Don't get as vitriolic as I do if you're going to do serious pieces that are going to be actual representations of the opinions of Gamergate. Oh, um, yes, I think it's entirely possible, and I think that that's the way to do it. Uh, Psy Facepalm says, what do you think should be done about? <laughs> what, do you, uh, what do you think, what do I think should be done? Well, um, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> What should be done? Well, obviously, we're doing what we're doing is working. So don't uh, here. Here's a great. Here's a an honest, genuine, not sarcastic suggestion. Don't stop doing what you're already doing, because it's very effective. What we're doing here, you know, there's a reason I started doing this. And that's because it's obviously effective. People obviously want to hear this and see this. Don't stop doing what you're already doing. You know, I, if if you want to know what should be done about the trolls and the angry virulent minority um, I don't know what to do about that I'm not sure what you do about that people are going to you can't censor people and you can't you know stop people from being who they are you can't police you can't police thought you can't prevent people who go on 4chan under an anonymous tag to say what they want to say. As, as Penn and Teller would say, the beautiful thing about, the thing, the thing that you have to accept about free speech is that free speech applies to anyone, even people who say awful, terrible things, even people who disagree with you. That's free speech. So I'm sorry if these people are saying terrible things, because they are, but the nature of a free and open press, you know, I can, I can sit here and talk about how terrible Lee Alexander is. She is. But I will defend her right to express terrible thoughts because the, the only reason we get to sit here on Twitter, the only reason we get to sit here and talk about Gamergate and do as much as we have is because of the institution of free speech. If this didn't exist, we wouldn't be able to do anything. You wouldn't be able to go to Inkle Studios and get and do whatever you want. It's because of that, because of the same free speech that allows people to tell other people to go kill themselves on National Suicide Awareness Day, that allows us to do this. So, um, another question. Uh, Hitman GFX says, uh, do you think a good message overall is for people to not trust anyone or anything associated with silver string media? Mm, I don't like the absolute nature of that question. I think for now, yes. I think they have proven to be in bed with a whole bunch of other people to be, to be practicing untoward corruption in terms of the money that they've laundered and gotten around and the 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 other the game developers and companies they've been in bed with to you know be as corrupt as possible it's akin to Zoe Quinn so I mean I think for now no you don't trust the damn thing they do do not support them 
until they prove otherwise, like the Escapist has. I'm fully willing to support the Escapist now until they do something that pisses me off, until they do something unethical, wrong. Then I'll boycott them again. Then I'll ignore them. Then I'll treat them as they deserve. Uh, Darth Daka uh, says, can you please post a link to the site you mentioned, the one where anyone can join and write journalistic articles? Let me find it. Inkle Studios. I'm going to post it to my Twitter right now. It's actually Inkle Writer. Uh, the description is, at Inkle, we believe it, tell, it takes great writers to tell great stories. Um... Inker Writer is a free tool designed to allow anyone to write and publish interactive stories. It's perfect for writers who want to try out interactivity, but also for teachers and students looks to looking to com mix com uh, computer skills and creative writing. So basically, it's a really awesome tool. And it's a completely different variety of how to write something. So I'm going to send you, it's inklestudios.com slash inklewriter, but I'm going to post, I'm going to tweet it right now. And it's going to have Gamergate on it, so you guys can just go to the, if, if you, can, you can go to my, you can go to my, uh, my page and look, at, you know my uh, Twitter feed, at America, I just posted it, it's up. It's in response to Darth Daka. So, yeah, there you go. Any other questions here? Because we've been running, we're, we're running kind of long. We're almost at an hour and a half here. Does anybody else have anything else important? If so, tweet me within the next 10 seconds. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a night because, oop, there's something else. Because, um, believe it or not, when I, when I sit here, it's not, it's not my default mode to be angry and rage all the time. So when I do this, as much as I, as much as I, you know, enjoy play, uh, doing this, um, getting all this anger out in a healthy way by expressing it at the people who make me angry and who are terrible objectively, it does exhaust the living hell out of me. So... If no one else has anything else, then I'm going to finish this up the same way I did yesterday. Uh, for the sake of anyone who wasn't here for this, this is the most important thing, after all, that what we're doing is important. And uh, yesterday, I, uh, me and... Oh, shoot, I can't remember who it was. Me and, uh, might have been Darth Daka, but I think I don't think it was. Um, we actually managed to get in touch with, uh, coincidentally, not through our, not through any actual, like, um, we need to hunt this guy down. Uh, we managed to get in touch with Space Midget 75, and I linked to his blog that he created. I don't know if this is going to become a big a thing that he's actually going to, um, maintain and keep posting to. Um, he started He started this mainly to house his comment that he left on a Eurogamer article that I read yesterday. And so I'm going to read it again right now just to finish us up again because we need to remember about that, why this is important. When all the major game sites posted news articles on the anti-harassment petition, I posted a comment on Eurogamer.net. Much to my surprise, delight, and frankly, a bit of concern. My comment has since entered Twitter via a screen grab. Some have asked if I could put it into a blog, as it summarizes a lot of what Gamergate means to people. So here you go. You don't need a petition with a statement like that, because 99% of all people would agree with it. You keep making out that this is the issue when the real problem has been discussed time and again in detail on various blo blogs and vlogs, nepotism, censorship, and the potentially risky practice of giving some people more exposure slash sales slash money slash PR because they got threatened by a fucking asshole somewhere. 
you want to make it an issue of inclusiveness to deflect attention away from the legitimate wrongdoing. Honestly, not only has the harassment feminist angle been blown so out of proportion in this whole thing, but it can be shown that harassment and prejudice is actually coming from both sides. By continuing And by continuing to suggest that it's just the gamers, even a minority of them, is pissing people off. Despicable comments and generalizations have been made by both sides, including the people you just linked to. People want to be able to say that they think a game is shit, or why they don't like someone, that people in relationships should be aware of conflicts of interest, that you're pushing a social agenda too hard, or even that they think sexism in games is a non-issue without the whole argument being boiled down to sexism and some harassment. Do some investigative journalism and address issues such as DMCAs, takedowns, and mass deletions of discussions. The 11 End of Gamers articles that have appeared within 48 hours of each other from separate sites. The number of serious threats made, what they were, and where they came from. The real Fine Young Capitalist story, the Twitter feeds, the audio recordings. The Wizard Chen abuse from apparently such nice social liberals because all this harassment is apparently one-sided. Phil Fish for losing his shit, because it's funny and may lighten the mood. Supposed professionals calling gamers losers, shit stains, worse than ISIS, and the abuse of people like Total Biscuit, Stephen Williams, jo and JonTron for having my view instead of your view. And ultimately, the crux of all this, the relationships, Patreon funding, friendships, job positions, living arrangements, advisory roles, and yes, romantic ones too, between journalists, indies, PR companies, IGF, and its finalists. It might, shock and horror, actually take two or three days of work. Or, you and some commenters here could just accuse us of being sexist and let the whole thing go on for longer than it needs to. So how are we winning? DMCA's takedowns and mass deletions of discussions. The Internet Aristocrat is talking about those. The 11 End of Gamers articles that all appeared within 48 hours of each other from separate sites. Addressing those has made the... Addressing those and, and bringing such attention to them has made the escapist back down and completely readdress, readdress and change how they report on news. The... The real Fine Young Capitalist story has been told by APG Nation this week. The Wizard Chan abuse is being debunked through Cinema Blend and other, as well as the Fine Young Capitalist's story, is being debunked publicly. Phil Fish, well, he already lost his shit. He's fucking gone. We can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Supposed professionals calling gamers losers, shit stains, worse than ISIS, and the abuse of others. That's why I'm here. That's what I've been talking about. We've been talking about Tyler Malka. We've been talking about Botherer, the head editor at Rock River Shotgun. We've been talking about Lee Alexander, Zoe Quinn, because she is a professional, supposedly. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. That's what I do. At least for the time being. And ultimately, the crux of all this, the relationships between journalists in these PR companies, IGF, and its finalists. Also, now being reported on by Cinema Blend, that that's what we're about. We, as Gamergate, keep bringing attention to those things. That's what we that what that's what has to be done. We have to keep doing what we're doing. Because it's working. Because we're winning. Because everything that's because just about everything that Space Midget 75 wants investigated and addressed are the things that we are ex investigating.
They're the things that we're addressing. They're the issues that we're forcing the gaming press to deal with. And without us, who would do it? That's what has to be done. Gamergate is what has to be done. I want to thank all you guys for, well, all you men, women, gay, lesbian, single, married, Asian, black, Indian, Arab, whoever you are, transgender, sorry, whoever you are, wherever you are, thank you for joining. 4chan, I don't want to give you guys the impression I have any any hate for you guys. You guys have produced the funniest memes that I've ever enjoyed. Thank you all, and good night.